All right, this is Jahangir from Emporium, and today we have part three of our genetics and cellular function unit, in which we'll talk about DNA replication. All right, so let's discuss DNA replication as our first topic for today. Now, DNA replication is just the ability of the cell to reproduce a strand of DNA, which will create a new copy of DNA for cellular division. So you can just think of it as basically the replication of DNA. I don't want you to confuse DNA replication with transcription. Both are contrasting processes. Transcription produces RNA, a messenger RNA, while DNA replication produces DNA. So always remember that. So in DNA replication, we have five enzymes that are responsible for this action of DNA replication. And we'll start by the first one. So let me just color code that. The, the first one is known as our DNA helicase or just helicase. The second enzyme is known as primase. The third enzyme is known as DNA polymerase 3. The fourth enzyme is known as DNA polymerase 1. And finally, our fifth enzyme is known as DNA ligase. As you can see, we have the suffix ace for each of these enzymes. So I want you to remember, the suffix ace usually indicates an enzyme. Alright, so now let's talk about the actions of DNA replication. But to do that, we need to talk about DNA itself. Now, DNA has two different strands. is a double helix, as we talked about. But these two different strands are opposite. Instead of talking about the directions such as north and north and south on a map, we refer to it as five prime to three prime prime and three prime to five prime. So the red strand would be a five prime to three prime direction, while our blue strand, which I will just color code here in blue, our blue strand represents our three prime to five prime direction. So this 5 prime to 3 prime will always bind to its opposite, which is the 3 prime to 5 prime. If you ever played with magnets, you know that there is a north pole and there is a south pole. And the north pole always binds with the south pole. The south pole will never bind with the south pole. And if you've ever tried doing that, I've always tried doing that. They always repel. So north pole always binds to south pole. 5 prime to 3 prime always binds to 3 prime to 5 prime. So now let's discuss what starts this whole DNA replication. And we start by talking about the enzyme helicase. So I'll just label it as H. Now helicase comes into contact with the double helix and breaks the hydrogen bonds between each nitrogenous base. It's basically like a zipper. It's unloading or unzipping this whole double helix and breaking that double helix down into two different strands as you can see from the right strand breaking out and the blue strand breaking out. Now when this does happen the helicase creates what is called a replication fork. Now when that replication fork is created our nitrogenous bases are exposed. So let's just say each of these gray lines are my nitrogenous bases. We have our four nitrogenous bases which are adenine, cyanine, guidonine, guinine, and thymine. Alright, so we have our nitrogenous bases exposed. Now what happens next? What happens after that helicase has exposed all of our nitrogenous bases? Well, this is when our enzyme primase comes in, and I'll just label it as P. Now primase is an enzyme that releases an RNA segment, which is known as the primer. The primer is basically the start line in this whole DNA replication race in which our racer would be the DNA polymerase 3, which I'll talk about later. You could think about the primer as the helicopter launch pad, telling the helicopter where to start, where to land. All right, so our primer has been created. Now what happens? Well, now is the time for the DNA polymerase 3. So I'll just put DNA P3, to just to abbreviate. So our DNA polymerase latches to the primer and moves on throughout the whole DNA segment, coding for it with its nucleotides. So it codes throughout the DNA. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. The DNA polymerase 3 doesn't go through any fragments, doesn't go through any obstacles. It's very simple. Now I'm sure you notice now that the DNA polymerase 3 is moving to the left, closer to the replication fork. This is known as the leading strand. 
Now, at this point in time, you might be wondering, why is the DNA polymerase moving to the left? Why is it moving to the replication fork? Well, as we discussed, the red line or the red strand represents our 5' prime to 3' prime strand. So then the DNA polymerase will code for the opposite. It will code 5' prime to 3' prime. And this is the way that the DNA polymerase moves. It moves from the 5' prime direction to the 3' prime direction. This is its natural natural stage of movement, moving from 5' prime to 3' prime, coding for this whole new strand of DNA. So what about the blue strand down here? Well, the blue strand represents our 3' prime to 5' prime, and as usual, our primase would come in and put a primer. The blue DNA strand it's much is much more different from the red DNA strand, as I talked about, different direction. And this is unnatural for our DNA polymerase. The DNA polymerase, as usual, moves from the 5' prime to 3', prime, but it moves away from the replication fork. So it's just moving this way, and it moves in fragments, unfortunately. Because of our DNA polymerase 3 having to move in fragments, our primers have to come in and add additional primers instead of adding just one simple primer. That's when our DNA polymerase 3 comes in and continues to code in these fragments. You might be wondering, what are these fragments called? Well, these fragments are called Okazaki fragments. So our DNA polymerase at the 3' prime to 5' prime end makes these Okazaki fragments because it must code from the 5' prime to 3' prime as usual, and it is unnatural for it to move away from the replication for creating these unnatural fragments. This is known as our lagging strand. So let's just say our DNA polymerase 3 has coded throughout the whole DNA, okay? So their job is done. This is when our DNA polymerase 1 comes in. So I'm just going to put it as a rectangle. So here is our DNA polymerase 1, and I'm just going to put P1. Now our DNA polymerase 1 comes into contact with all these primers and basically takes them out, basically eats them, and replaces them with nucleotides. So here's our other DNA polymer one, and they take out those primers. And you might be wondering, what do they replace those primers with? Well, they replace them with DNA nucleotides. So our DNA polymerase replaces those primers with DNA nucleotides, but they do leave these fragments, unfortunately. All right, so what happens now? We have our DNA, but we have these little fragments that we've just made from that DNA polymerase one. Well, this is when our other enzyme comes in, and that is our DNA ligase. Now, the DNA ligase attaches these fragments together, creating a long strand of DNA that we all know. So it just attaches those fragments together. It also proofreads the DNA, see if everything is in order. So here is our final product. We have our newly made DNA and we have our original DNA, our OG DNA. Now, as you can see, we have our old strand of DNA, our red strand, which is broken down by our helicase, and we have our newly made strand of DNA. This is known as semi-conservative replication. This is the same for our other DNA. So we have our newly made strand, and we have our original blue strand that was broken down by our helicase. And as you can see, this is also an example of semi-conservative replication. All right, so for a review, let's define the functions of each of these enzymes. And we'll first start by helicase. So as we talked about, helicase is the enzyme that unwinds the DNA, exposing the nitrogenous bases. The second enzyme, as we talked about, is primase. And primase is the one that puts the RNA segment in the DNA, and then that's the start line for the DNA, which is known as our primer. Now the third enzyme is known as DNA polymerase 3 and this is the one that synthesizes or codes for the whole DNA. Now our fourth enzyme is known as DNA polymerase 1 and this is the one that takes out all those primers that the primase left and exchanges that for nucleotides to code for the newly made DNA but it creates these fragments. 
Our fifth and final enzyme is known as our DNA ligase, and this is the one that glues all of those fragments left off by the DNA polymerase one, glues all those fragments together to make the final strand of DNA, which will bind with the older strand of DNA. The DNA ligase also proofreads the whole DNA to see if there are any errors. And unfortunately, that concludes part three of our genetics and cellular function unit, in which we discuss DNA replication. And as always, a Pomodoro day will make you a doctor someday. I'll see you next time.